Hello everybody and welcome back to another adventure here on 539. So I am at another random location which is going down the road in the middle of Ohio here and hit this small little country back road, uh, just an old gravel road, and I saw a sign coming up uh, where the road turned, and I noticed that it's an incredibly old, at least the uh, beginning of an old pathway to what uh, looks like an 1800s cemetery known as Buck Cemetery. And you can see from where I'm parked here that you really can't tell even what it looks like from the road, but the gateway here looked so incredible that I just had to get out and and uh, take a look at this place and see if the, the location at the end is uh, just as incredible as the beginning here. So let's go ahead and get out here and see uh, how far down. It looks pretty far down this little pathway. This probably was the old road and has been long since shut down. And here's the road that I actually drove in on. You can see it just kind of curves around this way and uh, continues going. So yeah, this it's really incredible looking. It's incredibly rusted and it looks really old. That's why I'm thinking that we should find something fairly epic here at the back. Wow. Yeah, it's definitely a long ways. It might be that when we get back here, we find that it's next to uh, an old river. Well, not an old river, but next to a river. Because uh, a lot of times uh, in the 1800s, uh, it was still an easier way to get around. Oh, there's deer. I just scared a, at least one, fairly large. I don't see any more. I don't know if you guys caught that on camera or not. But as you can tell, uh, fall has begun and a lot of the trees are beginning to change color here. So it looks really neat out. And wow, I was kind of expecting to at least see something by now. But I can see that the pathway kind of narrows up ahead. So I think we might be getting close. Looks like there's actually an old bridge coming up too. Either that or it's like a gateway, but it does kind of dip down on the other side, so kind of supports my theory that the original way to get here may have been through the river, even though at one time there also may have been access for different types of vehicles to get here, which is probably why the bridge exists here to begin with. But, whoa. There's definitely some more wildlife somewhere. This is crazy. So it's not even legal to drive down this road anymore. So in a, in a sense, it really is kind of an abandoned bridge here. Let's uh, hike down to the bottom real quick and see if we can get a view. And then we'll continue on. Well, probably not gonna be able to get quite the interior view that I was hoping for might have to go on that side but we will save that I guess for the end here and give you something to look forward to after the video is over here definitely some major cracking and erosion damage here on this old bridge though and up ahead you can start to finally see signs of this old graveyard and way way in the distance you can see my car there parked so not sure exactly how long this is let's say we're probably about a quarter of a mile down so not incredibly far and it looks like an old fence post right there wow so it is looking like we Stumbled upon something pretty special here. Uh, definitely old looking, lots of decay. Wow.
And another fairly unique find here, you can see that they have listed all of the people that are buried here that served in the Civil War. You can definitely see there are a few things hidden in the brush right over this way too. But first I wanted to check out something else. Uh, over here there's this little plot maybe, I'm not even sure if it's actually a grave site or what it is. It appears to have small, it might be plaques or small doors to open to put in urns. It looks like it's just a plaque though. It's kind of deceiving from a distance there. Uh, whatever's lying on top of it here, this debris, really just looked like it was a handle. But it's still very interesting. You see uh, James Carell here was actually part of the War of 1812. And we've been uh, visiting a lot of different locations recently, not only with veterans uh, of that war, but uh, some of the places that struck up that war, that began the battles that led to the War of 1812, including uh, Prophet's Town, Prophet's Rock, the Tippecanoe Battlefield, and uh, many other locations that we've done along this uh, journey here. And then uh, around the back here you can see a lot of these stones are starting to disappear into the grass and really need to be stood back up. Wow. And of all of them, this one seems to be in the best condition here. Oddly, although the top is completely missing, it seems to be in near perfect condition, at least the engraving, aside from some of the plant life that is growing on it. It does appear at one time that either a tree has fallen or something has pushed its way through the fence here. But I'm not seeing so far, except for the one that we spotted on the other side of this place, uh, any graves that seem to be lost in the debris. It looks like we have arrived at the very back corner. You can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, in this particular place, a tree has fallen and it has not yet been cut out. And so that's what kind of I'm thinking happened at the previous uh, place we were just at here. But you can see a little survey marker here has been placed, which is kind of interesting. And uh, oddly, the fence keeps going this way. So we're probably actually butted up against uh, some other property, a farmer's property or something like that. I don't know if I'm alone. I just heard voices. This, again, like I said, this might be somebody's property, but that was kind of weird. Just out of nowhere. Huh. I almost missed something until I came to check on whoever that was back there. It looks like it's probably a taller obelisk marker that has fallen down and might be 
in dire need of being set up before it completely crumbles away. Wow, and there's lots at the very back you can tell that have been lost and maybe even some more here in the brush. Uh, if there's going to be any place other than, again, the one we already identified, it would definitely be here. You can see again another really incredible looking stone here. Seems to be fairly similar in construction and design to the previous one. Although there's some obvious damage right here, which appears, uh, from what I'm seeing, it's some sort of impact damage. Probably uh, a bullet or something blunt has hit it really hard. And since a lot of the plant life back here is dying off right now, it would be fairly easy to spot if there's anything back there at all. And I'm assuming just based on the shape of how this uh, hillside here curves around here uh, that this is the back corner and there is a fence post right here and I'm also now seeing that there's a survey marker right here so yeah and you can see uh, a section of pipe here with some fencing still attached to it so we're definitely at the back corner now I can't really tell if it curved around this tree at one time or not it's definitely an animal hole so I gotta be kind of careful probably a groundhog and with these I think buckeyes or whatever large uh, nuts these are that are falling off the trees it is really really slippery uh, I don't think that's anything Although it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, you can see another section, a pipe is running right down there by my foot. Sort of indicating, oh wow, I even found an old piece of glass too, so sort of indicating that I may have been correct in assuming that uh, the fence originally went around the back side of that tree. But uh, if there is something there, it's uh, sort of crumbled away to the point where we can't identify it. But I'm kind of thinking that it's just some random stones or some uh, discarded junk. However, the brush right here does uh, extend about 15 feet now to the edge of the fence line. So it is quite possible that we might spot some more stuff that's been hidden and uh, not yet recovered. Definitely seeing some animal bones back here. It looks like an old deer bone is right there. Not that unusual kind of an odd placement without any other of the bones but it may just have been that an animal ran off with it and was eating it. Here we are at this little section that looks like it recently has been uh, freed a bit from the brush here but still has a lot of it remaining. Not as bad as it looked when we first came in. And on the other side, a very small chunk. You can see it has a JR initials there. I don't know, I'm not seeing anything else around here. Well, you can definitely see some beer cans back there. Well, lots actually. It looks like another bottle there. And a few more over here. So it kind of has turned into a bit of a nighttime party spot it looks like. And there is a pathway that goes over into this field back here. And I can see way, way over on the other end actually a hunter's deer hide where they 
go in to hunt for the deer. So obviously we won't disturb that property there. However, uh, let's go ahead and check out some of this stuff here in the center, see what we can see, maybe a few other veterans. And then we'll do one last quick look around the edges back here, see if we missed anything. And of course, uh, go up front here and check out the other side of the cool little abandoned bridge there. So, okay, right over here is definitely another overgrown section. That might have been where I was hearing the voices coming from earlier because I can now hear a four-wheeler that's being driven around too. A lot of times in places like this, voices tend to carry a bit and so it may seem like somebody is a lot closer than what they really are. seen anything in this brush over here next to the gravestone so it's not appearing that there's any others in here but I did want to check this one directly behind it definitely has that appearance to it but usually where we would find something it doesn't look like anything's there Well, here we go. We've located it. Yeah, yeah Thomas Hyatt, 1834 to 1882. There's a fairly large collection of probably lost stones that were found and replaced right here and wow this incredibly tall stone here that has broken into it looks like 10 different sections including a lost one it's kind of hard to tell actually i think it either was a very large family stone or potentially two different headstones that have been uh, placed together and now look like one tall one but as you can tell from this little stone barrier here, it is a old family section. Right behind it is this one here. Uh, definitely just a base. You can see where there would have been a small piece of metal to sink in and keep it in place. All right, let's enter the brush right over here and walk along the fence line and see if anything's been missed. Stumbled upon something kind of interesting down here. It looks like it's just part of an old decoration though. Other than that, it seems to be all clear.
And skipping over to the other side here, uh, to some of the more decayed pieces. It looks like there is a Woodman of the World, and actually, potentially two here, it looks like this one is uh, just made with a single log up there on the top. And the same goes for this one here. I wasn't thinking that there was only one, but from a distance, uh, with the decay, it was actually really hard to tell. And I'm either hearing wild turkeys come from this direction, or it's literally a hunter out in the field with a turkey call. I don't know which, I'm kind of, actually think it's a hunter. Wow, there's literally tons and tons of old bottles and beer cans back here. There must be a lot of people, uh, at least at one point in time, that were coming back here. Oh look, I don't know what that is over there. But there was at least some sort of pathway I don't know if it was an old road or if it's just been uh, an off-road track that's been carved by a farmer. But there's some sort of metal something down there. I don't know. I, don't know. I can't really tell from looking at it what it was. But uh, let's take a look at this old bridge and see if we can get a view from the other side. Definitely has had a few initials carved into it over the years. I think on the other side here, there's actually signs of some bullet holes. Not holes, but impact marks. You can see right here, 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 there, and there. And it looks like at one time, from this old steel braided cable here that this was where you would park to visit and so at some point they decided to move the barrier back to the main road there let's uh, actually see if we can see through the underneath of the bridge and into this uh, murky water here Looks like there's a little piece of land where the water is dried up that we can stand on. Pretty cool looking. Definitely not what I was expecting to find back here. Thanks everybody for watching this adventure over on 539. Make sure as always to check out the second channel in the links below and at the end of this video. And I will see all of you guys in our next adventure.
I was on the side of the road. I don't even know what episode I'm gonna put this in, but way in the trees there is a big group of wild turkeys. There's probably about 20 of them all together. Just thought that was kind of interesting.